Welcome back to OllieGolf.com. I'm your host, David Egono, and today I'm with Coach Bill Butner at Eckerd College, and he coaches the men's and the women's golf teams. Bill, how are you doing today? Great, great. How are you this morning? I'm good. I'm good. A little early, good. but, um, you know. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, well, how long have you been up? Uh, about an hour and a half. Well, you know what? Maybe... Maybe it's not that early. Maybe it's not that early. So as we get warmed up for this interview, uh, before I ask you the real, real questions, what's the favorite hole um, that you've played of golf in the past year or so? Oh, boy. That would be limited because I don't play golf anymore. Um, Wow. I guess uh, the first hole at Stream Song. Okay. Um, Why? It's, it, well, Stream Song. I don't you know. Stream Song is the newest, uh, latest, greatest. One of those core designs that uh, is made out of a, a old uh, mine, and it's one of the most unique pieces of land, similar to Pebble Beach, similar mm-hmm. to uh, a lot of the great course courses. And it's uh, just standing on top of the hill, you know, looking over the golf course. It's just magnificent. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, now, before before we transition, where is where is Stream Song? Stream Song is uh, kind of south of uh, Lakeland, Florida. Uh, they got two golf courses there. Um, it, it's one of the top, probably whatever. I think it's in the top twenty of new modern golf courses that came out last week. Uh, again, it's a modern golf course. It's not a Pine Valley. It's not Augusta. Not anything like that. It's more up the uh, the alley of the of the modern uh, modern designs. Okay. Now, Bill. I mean, you're you're obviously a head golf coach at a college. Um, you didn't just decide, you know, ten, twenty years years ago to play golf. How did you? What first attracted you to golf? Uh, initially, my my family, my my brother, my dad played golf, and I played everything else. I played uh, basketball, baseball, uh, soccer. Did did a lot of New England stuff where you did one season of each, and I became a pretty good athlete each. Um, unfortunately, during my high school days, I threw out my arm pitching, and um, uh, one summer I played golf and got hooked and. Uh, Ever since then, it's been a passion to just try and get better, try and get better. And each year, I figured out how to get a little bit better and better and better until I stopped playing in uh, in '95. And it's been uh, fun to to translate that into teaching and to coaching. Awesome. So now you you played on tour, correct? Yeah, from uh, '82 to '91. Now, what what was that like as far as a preparation standpoint for you? Well, it was the ultimate. You had to get physically, mentally, emotionally ready to play, and and each time, each day, each event, you tried to figure out how to get enough sleep, how to get the right foods, how to get you know, stay positive, uh, twist things that were you know kind of bad in your life, whether it be a a missed reservation in a hotel. When you travel so much, you just uh, there's always things on the road that just are upsetting. And uh, at the same time, you have a home life too that you're trying to keep at peace. And that's uh, putting all those pieces together is is one of the hardest parts. I think um, you see it throughout. Uh, good athletes have um, good stable, um, as they say, teams that work with them. And in in your goal is to stay positive as a team and and you know pursue forward even though you have bumps along the road hmm. now um whether it's on tour or uh transitioning into coaching what um what was just one humbling moment where you understood that as much as you've accomplished and as much as you or as far as you've gone um in your career that you had so much more to do and so much more to learn. 
Well, I just think each each rung of the ladder you go up from um, high school days to college days, college days to mini tour days, mini tours to the next level. There's still there's always a level up there that the Nicholases, the Watsons, the Normans, um, they always talked about the back nine of the Augusta. And, and as far as you've come, you still realize that, you know, even these guys talk about the same emotions that you go through, you know, during a qualifying school or, you know, the, the different stages trying to make a cut or, you know, even trying to win a tournament uh, that, that I, I just kind of like laugh at because I know these guys are so good and I know they're competent and I know that they played the game at the highest level and yet they still have those same emotions, you know, during a major. And I never got to that position where I was in contention at a major on the last day. Hmm. So uh, let's talk about the um, the the beginning of coaching. Why did you ever see yourself as a coach, whether um, growing up uh, playing whatever whatever sports that you played, and and you know getting a, a pension for him? Did you did you always want to go into coaching? No, that wasn't what I you know initially wanted. I wanted to play uh, initially. Um, I wanted to be on the on the Boston Celtics basketball team. That was kind of uh, Obviously, a goal. I didn't realize, you know, what that meant back in the day. But when I was watching them win championships, I figured, you know, that would be a good thing to do as an athlete. Um, obviously, as they get further along, they were, you know, being being who I am and the limited jumping ability and the limited this and that. Um, I I played pretty good high school basketball, but that was. And again, I went to North Carolina to um, you know, think about playing basketball there, which. I didn't realize how good they were coming out of a small town in Massachusetts. But uh, as I as I pursued athletics, I enjoyed being around the you know the coaches, being around the teams, and eventually I turned um, after my playing days in North Carolina. I I was able to uh, coach one year as an assistant coach, uh, and that was rewarding. I, I really enjoyed kind of passing information along and trying to guide kids along, but I had the desire to play. So instead of going into coaching, I went to the playing side. And then I knew once I stopped playing that that would be a great avenue, whether it be the club pro rank side or the coaching side. I think either one of those would have been right up my alley as trying to promote golf through either a facility or through a program. And uh, I started to go towards the the club pro side, but that uh, during you know just post nine eleven was a really bad situation in our area. Mm-hmm. So um, a a um, the coaching position came open, and uh, I went in that direction. Now at Eckerd, you coach the men and the women's teams, right? I do now. Initially, it was just a men's program, and about. Four years into it, five years into it, I started the women's program. So I have both of them now. So uh, without getting too uh, in-depth, if you will, um, what are some of the challenges of – well, let, let's let's start high level. Um, I mean, what does it take to run a men's team and a women's team? I mean, just day-to-day, what is, what is your day like? Is it just haywire or is it – are you more of a systematic – um, pragmatic type of guy. Well, for our program, it's chaotic because of the fact that we don't have uh, we don't have athletic scholarshiping. So therefore, I don't pick my players. I, I get what I get from the students side of it. Um, so they're not as motivated as I would like to see them. Um, also, the fact that uh, we don't have a home golf course as like a, a Division One program would have. So getting them on the golf course is another challenge. So the day starts out with workouts in the morning, one team or the other at 7 a.m. And, and you know, they, they practice through around their academic schedule. So some people practice at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Some people practice at noon. Some people practice at 2. Some people practice at 5. Uh, those that can play in the afternoon will play. So I'm always either working with a team or organizing the daily who's going to play routine um, and always kind of 
at their you know service to whenever they need to need questions concerning academics, personal life, or uh, golf. So it, it, every day is kind of a new challenge. Every day is a new situation. There are fun days that actually flow, um, but they're far and few between. Hmm. Now, if I read correctly, you guys won the last tournament that you played in, correct? No. No? I've only won one event in uh, our college that was about uh, eight, seven, eight years ago. Hmm. So what are some of the challenges of uh, just, I mean, to be very, very honest, um, on an emotional level of just, like you said, you don't get to pick your players, but that doesn't mean that you're not invested day in, day out in their success. And, and I mean, let's not even talk about success, but more so their growth. Um, what is it like just because I would, I would argue that in other sports, whether it be baseball or basketball or football, what have you, there's more of a, um, let's just say, direct output. Like there's or there's fruit from um, your your work ethic and your, um, your 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 approach to getting better. With golf, it's not always that obvious. You know, there's there's a journey. Um, there's a process that takes time to. Um, go from your your mind to your game. Um, so, what is it like just trying to, um, you know, usher these young men and women into the game of golf? That I mean, can be brutal at times. Like you said, I mean, I mistake when I said that you guys won. Um, you know, how, how how is that that communication for you? Well, one of the one of the other challenges I have here is we are in a region, in the southeast region, that uh, all my conference teams, all my regional teams are basically fully funded, so they get very international slash national stars. And so we rarely, uh, as I say, compete. Uh, competing means we come down in the last so-and-so holes with a chance to win. We We haven't done that except for once, like I said, and... Uh, I learned long ago that um, it's very hard to compete when you've got, you know, five of my number ones against your your team that um, is made up of very, very good players. So I've, I've kind of changed the direction from really trying to compete as a team is trying to get more of a personal growth out of each of the, the players and understand that, you know, to go from point A to point B is the goal now. Um, whether you, you know, if you're a guy trying to break, you know, 72, or guy trying to break 70, uh, girl trying to break 90, girl trying to break 80. Those are more the the realistic goals, um, and that's that's rewarding to see them figure out how to you know shave a shot here, shave a shot there, um, understand what the process is and what it takes to become a a really good player where you can play all 18 holes and put down a good score, and not necessarily play you know good. 13 or 15 holes and write down the same score. And so it's a it's a challenge to coach them um, emotionally, um, mechanically, and, and, and obviously the mental side comes out where they, the maturity level allow them to accept the change or not accept the change. So it's, it's, it's definitely a challenge and, and it's more of a challenge for uh, the women who are less talented than the men coming in. So it's 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 a rewarding challenge, but it's definitely a challenge. So oh, um and, and that's I mean that's the truth. I, I know for me I, I didn't play golf in college, I played football in college and I actually played in junior college and then division one. And <laughs> I'm laughing because it's just it's, it's hilarious. But one of the hardest things for me to grasp um, playing uh, in the defensive secondary was just all the different coverages and how um, just how important it is to know the very smallest details in these coverages. I mean, coming from junior college, it's like, I mean, honestly, uh, you just you fend for yourself and it works out how it works out. But on a higher level, you can't be, um, you know, you can't be Wyatt Earp. You, you have to fit in within the system, and just uh, 
just being younger and being 21 years old and just being, um, let's just say, <laughs> looking for um, the college experience. Well, I wouldn't even say so much that, but just being so ambitious um, and being so, like, passionate and driven towards um, me excelling, not understanding, you know, it's a journey and the team needs to excel. Really, really, like, it, it was about a three or four month just, you know, punch in the face because, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you see it on a daily basis or, you know, with every team. You have your, your guys or your girls who are just athletically there. They're ready. You know, there's nothing that they can't handle um, during their college career. But mentally, oh, my gosh, you got to start from yeah. <laughs> square one. Every no, there's no question. They, they come in different packages athletically, but they also come different packages emotionally. Mature, you know, the maturation side is, is that the biggest time of your life, I think, that you mature from probably age 18 to age 22. And, um, you know, if you are not mature enough, you, like you say, you try and do everything for yourself and you try and do everything above what you can think you can do. And, and it's a challenge to try and get you down to a level to say, listen, you know, just do one step at a time. Don't get ahead of yourself. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, focusing on challenges. Um, now, I mean, let's let's be real. Let's be really honest with ourselves. Um just pertaining to your story, that is, um, you played on the PGA, PGA Tour. I mean, you, you've you been on the main tour circuit. Um, you, you know, you, you've had to manage for yourself. What what, what, are, what are some of the challenges in college? I mean, you, you actually did speak about just how your team is not on the same competition landscape as the other teams in your region. Um, but one of the things that I've learned recently just about college golf is that you know, it's a grind. There's a lot of um, there's a lot a lot of obstacles that you know to somebody who's not aware of college golf. You know, there, there's just so many little different things that make it a challenge, or just as, or maybe in some cases, more challenging than playing on a set tour. So, how like what are some of the the, the differences in your mind? Well, that's one of the biggest highlights I try and alert the recruits that I have is the fact that there are so many challenges. And I think the biggest challenge is your time management skill. Um, how good are you at paying attention to doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it? And that at the college, you know, your academics come first, so that's your first priority. From there, um, you know, can I fit in? Uh, the practice that I want, kind of fit in the play that I need um, all around your studying. And then, of course, you have your your group presentation, your individual presentations that they require you to do, your community service hours. Um, there's a lot of other things that go on in the college that promote distraction. And then, of course, you know, we're at the beach. We um, have a beach on on campus and so you know for the guys it's you know you know not chasing the girls as much um there's parties all the time obviously lack of sleep plays a big role in it because you don't always sleep the way you do during the summertime um and then the girls you know they want their tans and this that and the other and it, it's a challenge from from their perspective to to you know stay at uh, pay attention to what you're trying to do when you're trying to do it. And and the best success that I've had with these kids or these student athletes is is those that are so disciplined, they do what they want to do, they, and they get total college experience, and yet their golf game, you know, comes to the forefront. So I'm convinced it can be done. Oh, totally. Totally. Now, um, just as a as a parallel um in the pre-interview process um I asked you about uh if you've ran any businesses and you said you ran an S Corp what was that uh, what, bring it, bringing what you've done in golf whether it be a, as a player and now as a coach but also running a business what are some 
um, things that you, uh, besides, you know, time management and discipline that you try to impress upon, you know, your, your student athletes, just coming from um, the business world, if you will? Well, you know, again, we are not with a tremendous amount of uh, financial support without, uh, you know, the the um, the funds for scholarshiping. We are limited with funds with, um, you know, with uniforms and, and your budgetary stuff. So within the framework of your budget, you're always trying to figure out how to get the most bang out of your buck. And try and figure out, you know, what terms you can play in, what terms you can afford. Uh, obviously, we don't fly anywhere. We don't need to, but uh, it'd be nice to take them somewhere to experience a Pinehurst or a, a Northern Course or whatever. But, you know, we stay within the framework of our budget and play as much as we can, try and get the most bang out of our buck for 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 what we have to deal with. So it, it's a challenge all around. So um, what, um, speaking specifically about Eckerd and just whether it's the rest of the season or, or you know, preparing for uh, the fall season, what are some of your um, building blocks or, um, dare I say, uh, mild expectations um, as, you, as you sort of finish out the spring season here and, and prepare for the summer? What are some of the things that you're trying to get your uh, your athletes to uh, conceptualize and uh, to own going into the summer? Well, I think they, you know, you're always trying to, to teach uh, team chemistry. You're always trying to teach team bonding. You're always trying to do things as a team to kind of have the support system that each player needs on and off the golf course. And um, that's not always a easiest thing is a lot of the kids come from different backgrounds and you know it's all about me attitude and and to try and get them to to kind of help one another and to lift one another up and you know the game is tough on a day-to-day basis and without uh without uh, team chemistry problems um i it, our goals are always to try and get better each day and trying to trying to get ready for postseason play. That's, you know, most every team is looking for postseason. And for us, it's an extremely big challenge because our region is full of the top 10 in the country. And, and, uh, we don't, we don't supply the team with top 10, um, stuff. So we have to overcome certain disadvantages to become one of those top 10. So that's that's usually the challenge, and the best way to do it is to, to to let them know that each one of them has to work individually on their weaknesses and and get their weaknesses down, get their their scoring where you know you don't ever make a double bogey, you try to limit your bogeys, you you're always working from the the high score down rather than the low score up. You're not trying to shoot 64, you're always trying to not shoot 675. Mm-hmm. So you you're trying to get the concept, and that's the hardest part is they don't understand how to shoot 74 from the idea of hitting, you know, playing safe, playing conservative or middle of fairways or away from you know pins or away from this. Uh, they they're used to firing, 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 and the more they fire, the more trouble they bring into play, and the more challenges they bring to themselves, which that's that's the biggest goal, trying to get them to individually understand how to play golf. Yeah, I could see that being, um, you know, like we said before, it's just I imagine you're not the only coach that has that uh, that burden, but it's definitely um, just with that age group and just having to, um, you know, have team goals. It's just... Uh, I mean, and that, that that can be daunting, I bet. Um, so, my last question for you is uh, fairly straightforward, and I know you've given you've given us some um, some great points just about time management and you know building a team around you and managing your emotions. Um, besides that, is there a, a specific mindset, or dare I say, a, a secret sauce to just um, not just your success, um, but um, 
others, other successful people in golf um, that you've seen time and time again be able to carry them out of, say, the bunker or just the low points in their life? Well, I think uh, you, you know, I've been around the Tom Watsons, the Greg Normans, and and there's there's an air of, of confidence. Uh, uh, positivity that uh, everybody, you know, the, the the guys on tour that were very negative, kind of were shunned upon. Nobody wanted to be around negativity, and and whether it be in life or in golf, it's the same thing. I think you want to figure out how each um, step of the process is an opportunity. Each step of the way in a golf round is an opportunity. Um, and yeah, we can all dwell on things that we, you know, the bad breaks we took or the bad this or the change of our lives or the change of the round. But the, the great players learn to to use them as opportunities, as springboards to, you know, after you shoot 42 in the back on the front side, you know, tell yourself this is going to be the greatest round ever shot to shoot on the par for the for the 18 holes and and go out with a positive attitude, even though you can look back and say you three putted three times and da 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 da, hit the card path, went out of bounds, whatever you know. And that's that's the hardest thing I think the the, the ego side of the thing um, mm-hmm. always tends to go backwards and point the finger and blame and everything. And um, you know that the most successful people have have, have put the the bad things in the life and, and turn them into positive and kept a positive attitude and, and surround themselves with positive people. And, um, so, you know, that, that's the one thing I think that, uh, I've seen in my career is to how champions are champions. They, they do the right things and, and think the right thoughts. Mm. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I mean, I think you made a great point about we just naturally, um, our egos and emotions naturally go backwards. I mean, it's, it is a skill. Uh, and I'm saying this uh, from somebody who had to build it within himself. It is a skill um, to be able to um, to fail, let's be honest, to be to, to fail, whether on a minute level or, you know, a more open level, public level, and say, well, this is an opportunity to do this. This, this, this allows me to learn this more. You know, it's right. um, especially in, in golf where it's a whole lot more insular and it's a mental side um, that is uh, paramount because we don't get to see in all the other sports, you know, uh, I mean, there's more of a dynamic instant, um, you know, let's just say uh, more a little bit on the negative side. Uh, you can see a meltdown, you know, you can right. see um, you can see somebody lose confidence a little bit more easily in the other sports. Well, in golf, it's not so much that you can hide that. Um, it's just more so that, um, you know, you could have a bad hole in, in your first nine, um, like you said, double bogey, and that can hurt you for weeks, you know. Uh, where, whereas in other sports, you know, you can you can get fouled and go to the free throw line and, you know, regain your jumper and, you know, do all these other little things. And, it, you know, it, it, it's just it's so, so um, important to be positive. I, I right. totally, and totally see, see that. You, and especially see it you know, March Madness here where it's a win or go home kind of thing where the officials alter your state of mind, um, your free throws, you've let the team down. Um, there's a lot of things that happen athletically uh, in, in all the sports that uh, you can you turn a missed free throw into a negative thing. You can turn a call and and lose your focus, but, you know, the, the, the true champions overcome bad situations and and uh, don't point, you know, towards the negativity, but look forward to this next play or this next free throw or whatever. You know, that's what my opportunity is. Uh, I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Well, Bill, I, I just want to thank you for coming on to uh, Ollie Golf and, and just sharing your your process, your journey. I mean, it's not one of the things that I like to tell people. Like, why do you interview coaches? You know, why are you? And it's like, well, you know, the awesome part about golf is that a lot of the 
a lot of the great stories and the great perspectives, in my opinion, honestly, being very selfish, are about the guys that, you know what, aren't on the cover of, of magazines or on Golf Channel yet. Those are the great stories. So um, I just want to thank you for taking time out to do this interview. Um, not so early in the morning. So there you go. I appreciate it and uh, look forward to you know, if any other questions or any kind of help you need, let me know. No doubt. Well, I just want to thank you and thank everybody else for being a part of it. No problem. Appreciate it.